Everybody's got a sense of humor today Because I was a You know That was a temp today A joke My little Joe Biden I'll give you another look at him It's, not, it's my meme of the day <laughs> I don't know You gotta have a little sense of humor I guess Especially after the, the last number of days Made me laugh anyways, and I, and I needed that a little bit. So, anyway. Feel free to use it. Repost it, tweet it, whatever you got to do with it. I don't give a shit. But, um, yeah, I don't know what else needs to be said. What a, what a sad deal this weekend turned out to be for a lot of people. There's fucking shootings going on all over the place. It's just, I mean, it's just nuts. <sighs> And there's really, you know, from from my my perspective, I don't I don't see any way that politicians and lobbyists and legislation is going to fix this. We are fundamentally broken. We are fundamentally fucked up. I mean, this kid, this kid, this, 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 you know, there's always the big one, right? Like when you had the Buffalo thing, and then you had Uvalde. The Uvalde kid was the, he was you know he was in the limelight, and the Buffalo kid, and I, no one ever. Re- I mean, it just went away, right? It makes you wonder. And that one was the weird one. And I pulled up the uh, the photos of that, and we looked at that doctored up picture. Sure, maybe it was a legit photo, but somebody certainly doctored it up. It was definitely not. That was not a legit photo when they were, you know, arresting that kid in Buffalo and putting him in the car. Thankfully, yesterday, come to find out that kid had another firearm in that vehicle and he had another 50 rounds. And he had plans. He had he'd gone up north. Um, and they pulled him up in, um, what was it, Lake Forest, I think. There's all those, little, Chicago's weird with all the little suburbs. But um, the place where he pulled off the shooting... It's only 12.2 square miles. I believe Michael Jordan's got a house there. And then they, when they got him, he was headed on, he was on the 41 and he was headed back down south, back towards the, the place where he had just, you know, pulled this off hours later. They said he went to Wisconsin and then came back and it sounded like he had intentions of, of um, doing another shooting somewhere. I don't know. That's what they said. They said he had he, he not only did he you know pull the one off, but he was he was going to do the other one. Thankfully, there was a motorist on the road. There was there's there's been contra- contradicting stories, as there always is in these things. There's there's always you know the police department said that they had an officer on the road and that he was the one who recognized. Um, I'm not even going to call this dude by his name. I don't think because I I mean even though I'm nobody, I don't really want to put him out there. Any more than he already is. You know? I'm going to call him Beaker. He looked like Beaker off the Muppets. So we'll just call him Beaker. How about that? I'm sure. I think that suffices. So Beaker is coming back. So he's gone to Wisconsin. Allegedly is what they're saying. He's flipped it around. And he's coming back. In his little Honda Fit. His little... uh his goofy little thing, his little uh, his little electric car, you know. And um, the first thing I saw 
after this all happened was a bunch of these, a bunch of these idiot leftists out there put out tweets of this kid dressed up like where's Waldo? He was at a Trump rally. Um, there was another picture where he had the the Trump flag wrapped around. He was just making fun. He was mocking the whole thing. There was another picture of me sitting there in like what looks like a cell, right? Reading the Bible. This kid is weird. Beaker was weird. He apparently lived in the basement of his house. His dad lived upstairs. He had a basement apartment. The the uh, the authorities had been called twice in a year in 2019. One time he had attempted suicide apparently, and um, they showed up. And they left it to mental health official, officials because that's not really their area of expertise. And then the next time they were called, he had threatened the whole family. He said he was going to kill every. He said I was, he was going to kill everybody. Now the way it looks is that mom and dad are, I don't divorced, separated. I don't know what. She looks like a real piece of work too. The father apparently ran for mayor. He lost an election, the last election, and um, the mother, I guess, lived somewhere else. That's where the kid went when he came off the roof. And he left the, he left the firearm up there. Now, there, here's something that's really bothering me, and I've been trying to look this up for a while now. Um, law enforcement just keeps referring to the firearm that he used as an AR, AR-style uh, high-powered rifle. What's going on here? They said the same thing about the other one. We've, we've not seen this. They always come out and say what it is. Why are they not saying what do you what what kind of I mean ATF came and got the the firearm. Why are they not why are they saying that? Why are not why aren't they saying what it is? It's obviously not an AR fifteen that he used. Is it because they don't want to take that shade off of that gun like like you know, that rifle's got such a you know, everybody calls it an assault rifle and they're doing it again. They do it every time. These people, they don't, they've never been around firearms. They don't have any clue. An assault weapon is fully automatic, people. For anybody that doesn't understand that. I mean, I can take a, a, a handgun and pop off just as many rounds as I can with an AR-15. An AR-15 is a souped-up 22. But they keep saying, and I can't for the life of me, I sat there for a good two hours this morning trying to find, like, what was the the model number? Not that it matters. Seven people lost their lives, tons are injured, and a bunch of people are injured beyond even the here and now because they're going to have to deal with this trauma forever. I mean, they found a poor little infant that he was underneath his dad. His mom and dad both got killed. They were both, you know, there were two of the seven victims. Initially, it was labeled as six. Now it's seven because of another, uh, you know, one of them that, at the hospital succumbed to their injuries and passed away as well. And Beaker, um, I'll pull up the clip here. We've got the uh, state's attorney. Let me just pull this up. He's given his statement. But they did, I mean, they did hold him with no bail, which that's that's a no-brainer. I mean, you know. And he admitted to all of it too. So anyway, um, let me just pull this thing back just a second because I used this guy for sound check so I don't know where you get his name and all that Cavelli's done a pretty good job it seems seems like he's done a lot better than it, he's been pretty transparent with everything and it seems like there's been some fuck ups like there's been some screw ups in this thing I mean that this kid was known he was on the radar he was you know this was not um, you know the the father apparently Obviously, he's got a lot of connections to the community. It's a small community of about 30,000 people. Like I said, I think Michael Jordan's got a place there. It's right on Lake Michigan. It's a nice place. It's not like, um, you know, I mean, it's not like Southside Chicago. It's 25 miles north. They don't have shit like this go down. Shit like this doesn't happen up there. This is a, you know, it's just kind of an up, uptick neighborhood. Like I said, right on the water. 12.2 square miles. It's just weird. There's a, and we'll get into it, but here I'm just going to play this because I haven't listened all the way. I, uh, this just came up. So here we go. Good morning. My name is Eric Reinhardt. I'm the Lake County State's Attorney. This morning, a few moments ago, 
the judge ruled that Robert Cremo the third would be held without bond. Beaker. That there was probable cause to hold him at this time for seven counts of first degree murder. We have filed those counts alleging the intentional killing of seven individuals. Based on the information <laughs> that stupid the notification has produced so far, the judge found that uh, the evidence was at such a level that he could be held without bond. Also because the fact that uh, it is a mandatory life sentence. Additional details were developed during that bond. Now, I'd be willing to bet that this kid, he should be shitting himself right now. I mean, he's, he's 21 years old and he's, he's gone. He's going to do life. And he ain't going to do good in there. You all saw the pictures of him. He ain't going to have any of that Kool-Aid hair or any of that. And it, you know, I mean, he's going to have a rough time in there. He's going to be in, uh, you know, I would guess he's going to be on suicide watch for quite a, quite a while because if, if from everything I saw from him, and this is what I'm going to get into some of the, the anomalies of this whole thing. But what I saw with this kid was that, um, I don't know, I'm sure you all saw his music if you want to call it that, it was more like a, it was more like, I don't even know what the style, what you would call it. They had some word for it. It's not, he's not, everybody called him a rapper. I don't even know anymore. Um, but he was more, it was more like he was just talking and, and his animations and his drawings, you know, the one of them, it ended and it had a, it had a, an individual in the in the animation and the drawing laying in a puddle of blood with a rifle. And the police had taken him out. Now, what came to light was that he had another, he had another spot. So I found it really weird that with the first one, I thought, well, what, what the hell? This kid obviously was trying to do the, the whole you know, go out on a blaze of glory and then have the suicide by cop thing happen to him. So he busts off like 70 rounds, kills seven people, injures, there's the numbers, it varies. It's a lot. It's up in, the, it's like 38 now. The number keeps changing, but that's going to happen when you've got 70 rounds, you know? I mean, I'm sure there's people that, that fled out of there and didn't even realize they'd been hit because of the adrenaline, you know? But it seemed to me like what he was trying to do is, you know, the whole go out in the in, in the in the blaze of glory, be a, be some kind of a, you know, whatever he thought he was going to be. I don't know if he was. I mean, it sounded like he'd been planning this for a number of years. This, the video that came out was like from 2018, so he'd obviously been thinking about this. Uh, didn't have friends. He didn't go to public high school. He was homeschooled, which is kind of weird because. The uncle came out and, and made a statement to the press, and maybe it was the shock of the moment. But why would you put yourself out there like that? He came out and you know, and he he made the statement that he didn't even know that the kid had any guns. Well, that the, the police had already been over to that house once before. They took like 16, 16 knives and a sword and a bunch of shit, and he had pistols. He had five firearms. And his father, if you're not twenty one in Illinois, okay, Illinois has got some of the toughest gun control laws out there. The father obviously knew the police had been there twice. He obviously knew the kid tried to kill himself once and he threatened to kill the whole entire family. Um, at one point in time, they offered him some, uh, some, some mental help. It was declined and that's when they decided to homeschool him. And so they knew, and he was down there in that basement Apparently, that's where he made those music videos. And if you watch the one, it's pretty elaborate. So the kid had access to money. You know, they said he just, he, he had worked part-time at some goofy place, you know. But he definitely, I mean, this, the set and, and, and just doing this myself, and I'm an idiot, but doing this production myself, I know what goes into it. And I know how difficult it is to do it by yourself. And this kid was rolling with nobody. So, I mean, he did, even though the, even though the content was sickening and very disturbing. The production value of what he did was actually pretty, I mean, it was, it was, it was pretty good. And I hate to say that because I mean, the, the content was definitely, 
I mean, it's content of a, of a, of a sick person, you know? And, uh, they said, you know, it's a typical story, loner, mental, mental health issues. Um, and the dad though, the dad had to sign off, um, because you have to get a card in Illinois to purchase a firearm. So, and then, then after that, so I mean, I believe there's like, like two waiting periods. That stupid notification. I'm dropping frames too, left and right. Hopefully it's going back down now. Yeah, it seems to be all right. Anyways, that's always something. So, I mean, it, you know, Illinois is one of the most difficult states to, to get a firearm. And that's why everybody's always getting their, you know, that's why the guns are coming into Chicago from Indiana. They've got, you know, and they've got the, you know, the toughest gun control. Basically, I mean, behind New York City, I would say. And just violence like crazy. New York City's the same way right now. They had a, there was one that happened down outside of uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, a little suburb. Guy had the house like barricaded up with plywood. Um, he was in there with his girlfriend. He killed her. He lured the police in and opened fire, hit like three of them. They, as far as I know, they were all, you know, supposed to be, they were recovering and going to be okay. The crazy thing is, is the dude that lived across the street, he's sitting there with his family. They're watching a movie in the living room. And there happened to be like a Ford truck out in front of his house. And this guy, when he shot at the, at the police, just sprayed this Ford and it caught the bullets. And, and when you looked at the, the path, the trajectory, I mean, those, those rounds would have gone right, right in through like his, his living room window where his family was where they watched a the movie. He said he heard the first couple shots. Thought it was fireworks. It's the 4th of July, right? There was a lady that was like one of the neighbors. She saw somebody laying in the, in, in the yard that had been shot, killed. She goes running over wondering what's going on. All of a sudden, she, you know, she's, you know, you can hear like the husband. He's screaming at her to get the hell out of it. She's running. She hides behind a tree. The guy, you know, he had the whole house. I mean, it looked like a nice neighborhood too, but he had the house like all plywooded up. It's like, isn't that a red flag? Isn't that a red flag? You know, I sat down with my son and a, and a friend of his last night, and I told them both, I said, you know, here's the deal. I was like, if you guys, you know, and, and my son, I, I, I showed this video to him. I said, this is going to be disturbing. And he goes, I know, I know this. I've heard that. I said, man, so here he's seen this shit. This kid had like over a million hits on, I don't know, YouTube or I don't know what platforms he was on. I'd never heard of him, but why would I have? Beaker went by the name Awake the Rapper. He had a wake tattooed across here. He had five. He had the one, two, three, four with a slash through it under his eye. And then he had a 47. Um, it looked like he had an Antifa um, tattoo on his neck. You know, they were trying to, I mean, he was, he was subscribed to, um, they, you know, some Antifa, like he was always on Antifa um, social media and shit. And of course the left tries to make him out to be a Trump supporter. And of course that's the first place they go. It's the first place they go with it, right? I mean, this this kid, I, I don't know. I'd be surprised if he makes it. I think the first chance he gets, they probably got him on suicide watch right now. But I don't even know why they'd care. That's what he wants. I mean, if you want this, you know, this is this, this one that's just like, dude, you, I mean, there ain't much humanity in somebody like that. So, but I was sitting there wondering, I was like, there's got to be something else to this because why would that kid just throw the firearm down? He dressed up like a female. And this is a funny thing. And this is another thing that I'm going to, I'm just going to come out here with this because it seems as though we have a real difficult time now defining what a woman is in this fucking country. So was it wasn't that like um, some kind of a some kind of a faux pas when they came out and said he was dressed in females' clothing? Well, what defines what females' clothing is? What defines what a woman's clothing is? We can't even define what a woman is, and we wonder why we have kids like Beaker. We wonder why this is what happens. This is our fault, you know. I mean, we've allowed this shit to go on. We've allowed this world. I saw that old World War II vet. It reminded me of my grandfather. And I told my mom when we were talking on Saturday, and I just told her straight up, I said, Mom, I said, you know what? And, and all these 
these leftists and everybody that's all upset about Roe v. Wade and everything are throwing fits and saying they're not going to fucking, you know, celebrate the fourth. These people don't understand that nobody banned abortion. They just reverted back to the state. That's it. It's not what it's not the shit that you're making it out to be. I mean, yeah, the, you know what you need to do if you got a problem with it, get involved. Get involved with your local government. Get involved and in, and in, and in, you know, the ball's in your court now. Now you actually have to do something, people. If this is something you believe in and this is something that you you need to take care of, then take care of it. Be involved. Become active because right now we're just a bunch of morons. That's why I made that meme. You know? I mean, we are stu- this this country is fucking stupid. Everybody gets on my shit about why I get political, why I pay attention to this stuff. It's because of shit like this. It affects us all. And it's affecting us all right now. And it's going to keep doing it. The next two years, you watch, we still got another two years of this clown left. And who knows what kind of pieces are going to be left to pick up when it's all done. Because the way he's going right now, he doesn't even have a fucking clue. And whoever's running him, because he ain't coming up on this shit. You know, it's not, he's not coming up with this shit on his own. The guy doesn't even know how to probably eat, you know, heat up a can of soup. I mean, he's clueless. You know, and then they show pictures and, he, and he's hanging out with his, uh, his hunty. The big guy in Hunty, who's a who should be indicted on a gun charge, a federal gun charge. If that was me that pulled that shit, I'd be going away. I mean, that you know, he lied on a background check. That's punishable by ten years and two hundred fifty thousand dollars. The gun was taken from his place while he was wandering around naked with a prostitute. His dead brother's widowed wife comes over, who he'd been sleeping with. She takes the gun and throws it in a fucking full dumpster down by a grocery store in a high school. The Secret Service comes in. The FBI shows up. I mean, where's that at? It's nowhere. The big guy leaves a voicemail saying, Ah, oh, yeah, I think, the, uh, I think the internet thing that's coming out in the Times is going to be good. I think you're in the clear. No reason to call me back, pal. I'm just checking on you. I mean, is that... And there's nothing about it. The only place you hear anything about that is on you know, different outlets, different news outlets that are on the internet, basically. You hear it from people like me. I mean, it's out there. Peter Ducey tries to uh, bring it up with, um, you know, with with Corinne Jean-Pierre yesterday at a press conference. She just shuts down. I'm not talking about anything that has to do with this alleged place, you know. And in that respect, I do feel bad for her because she doesn't know what's going on. She, She, I mean... She doesn't have any clue what she got thrown in the middle of. You know, I think those, the, you know, the visions of grandeur and in that job, you know, oh, White House press secretary, big time now, right? Ooh, you know, I don't know. You know, it's like Ron Burgundy walking down the street at the end of Anchorman drinking milk. And, you know, milk was a bad decision. I don't know. It's just, it, and it's, this world is just making no sense. And these, you know, we, we, we keep thinking that it's going to get fixed. Well, it's not. It's not going to get fixed by more, you know, different elections, putting in more of the same people. It's not going to get, it's never going to get fixed. I mean, it's right now, it's like, are we beyond the point of no return? We're already in a recession. I don't care what you say. Um, I was listening to Peter Schiff. He's a pretty, um, he, he, he's as close to a economic profit as there is. And I've been saying this for a while. We're already there. I've been saying this for a long time and everybody that's listened to me, they, they know that because I've been, I've always made that, that analogy of the tidal wave, the water gets sucked out and everybody stands on the beach looking around and going, Whoa, that's kind of weird. And then boom, here it comes right on your fucking head. I think that's where we're at. The wave hasn't crested yet, but it's coming. And when it shows up, I mean, I don't think we've seen anything yet. You know, he, he's... Um, and then the guy has the nerve to get up there and tell 
the mom and pop gas station owners that to ask them to lower their fucking prices. They make like a nickel a gallon on fuel. Somebody that has a gas station, it's more trouble to have the fuel pumps up front than to just have the store. But to have the fuel pumps, it brings people into the store. So it's kind of like the necessary thing that you got to do, even though you don't make much off of it. I mean, it. And so he's got the audacity to come after a small business. This motherfucker made $15 million in 20, 2017 and 2018. This stuff doesn't affect him. This stuff doesn't affect Nancy Pelosi, who's worth $115, 20000000 million. doesn't affect her. This shit doesn't affect anybody in Congress because all those motherfuckers are at least making 140 a year. Plus their lobbies, you know, the lobbyists that pay them off to vote. I mean, the lobbyists can pay them up to like five G's a piece for a vote. I mean, why do you think they want to stay in there? And this is what we keep voting for because we're dumb. We're stupid. We're absolutely idiots. And we think that we think that by putting up yard signs and voting, they go, well, vote your conscience in the midterm. Vote your conscience in 24. Why? It does nothing. Vote your con- What? Most people, I'm sorry to say this, and Plato said the same thing, is that, you know, most people... As he said, he goes, if we're going to have a republic, he goes, we can't have people in there that are not qualified. It's like, you're not going to take, you're not going to take a, a, a custodian from a fucking a mall and put him on the fucking fire department as the captain, are you? Or make him the, you know, the, the, the chief of police or the mayor? No, you're not. But it's in effect what we've done with our electoral system is we've taken these fucking spoiled brat fucking punks that have money that's trickled down. And because of the money, they get elected. The people that are informed and know what's up can't, you know, you're never going to get elected. You don't have a chance because if you don't have that money, you know, you're done. There's no way. Why? I mean, and to want to be in that position anyways, you know. I mean, like I said, I joked around. I was like, shit, I would love to run against fucking Liz Cheney. You know? Now I've heard she's talking about some kind of, there's pos- there's t- speak of a, her running for president. Oh, my God. That's just what we need. I mean, if you put a wig on Dick Cheney, it'd be just, I mean, good God. I'm not trying to bash on anybody's appearance, but, you know, I mean, I just see that sneering old man, that fucking old bastard, that son of a bitch. It's, I mean, just a war criminal. And that's all she wants to do. My prediction was she, wasn't, she isn't going to win her spot in Wyoming and, and she's going to go into the military industrial complex. I think that's more likely than her putting together a presidential run because I don't think there's any way. But she's probably got the money to do it. She's got the backing of daddy and the bushes, you know. You know the bushes would be all over that. Old George Bush Jr. You get free bologna sandwiches for life. It's pathetic, though. I mean, well, we got it. We 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 have got a fundamental breakdown of society going on here, and and I mean, the, the fact that these the dad takes his kid in and gets him five firearms after the police have been there for one for a suicide attempt, number two for uh, basically a you know a threat of of murder and they leave out of there with all those weapons. It sounds like he's just pretty much locked himself down there in that basement and to his own devices. I say he didn't hang out with anybody and you know, I don't know if the kid was probably made fun of one of the videos. There was sound of laughter in the background and he, I mean, he looked like he was going through, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he probably got picked on and teased and, but you know what? Everybody does. <laughs> I mean, I grew up as the fat kid. I got shamed by teachers. I had to do push-ups in front of class in second grade. The other kids would get donuts, and me and my buddy, we would get fucking carrots and celery. How how does that make you feel as a kid? But you know what? I mean, at that point, that's when I started fighting back. I started swinging, you know? But that's, that's how we handled it back then, you know? Now you get in a fight at school and they fucking throw your ass out. You're suspended. They make like, I mean, it's like kids fight, you know, that's part of the deal. 
I mean, it's just like, um, it's just like in prison. You, you got to stand up for yourself, you know, stand tall, even if you get your ass whooped. But now we've, we, you know, we've grown up, we've, we've, we've raised these children to, um, you know, like the, with these, these pro- programs like safe to tell. Yeah. There's a time and a place for that. If you're a kid, somebody's getting seriously hurt, you know, I mean, but the, the just to tell on people, I mean, you got a nation of tattletales. That's what we got coming up. And that's our fault. That's my generation's fault. That's the boomer's fault. You know, and pretty soon we're going to have it be in the millennials fault, but the millennials are already screwed because, you know, they, they grew up with the whole, let's go play a game where we just kick a ball around in the middle of a field and nobody scores any points and nobody wins or loses. They even have, they have leagues with that game where they don't even play with a ball. They fake it. Have you seen these? <laughs> Speaking of which, has anybody ever seen those, the, 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 the stick horse races that these girls do at some, somewhere in Europe? And they take it serious. These girls have got them little, what do they call them? A little stick horse. You know, it's got a broomstick with a horse head on the end of it. They set them up with an obstacle course and everything. And these little girls, they, I mean, they're taking it seriously, right? Oh, it's funny as hell. I'm going to have to write that down. I'll have to pull that up later for a little comic relief because I think at the end of this thing, we're going to need it. That's kind of why I started off with my little stupid meme of butthole. Anyway, let's go back and see what happened here because I still have, I've yet to watch this. So I guess this is kind of a reaction video for me, I guess. So if you want to see my reaction, I guess here it comes. Mm, we got to pull that back up. Oops, a daisy. There we go. Decides that this is an ongoing and active investigation with all of our law enforcement partners. If anyone has any surveillance footage whatsoever of the July 4th Highland Park Parade, we would urge them to contact the Highland Park Police Department. Deputy Chief Covelli probably... Now, I'm just going to pause it for a second. This piques my curiosity with the father. Is the kid's dad, is Beaker Sr. going to catch charges on this? Be interesting to see. As he signed off on it. He greenlit this Tom fuckery and he let the kid fucking stay in his house and you know. And then the mom, I saw the mom, and we'll see some footage of that too. She's just screaming at cops when they showed up over there because the kid went there, Beaker went over there after he he dressed up like a woman. I know I'm making broad generalizations about what a woman looks like. I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm very apologetic about that because I don't even know now what, what I mean. Like I said, I've never screwed up on that so far, but now at 46, I'm I'm not questioning myself. Imagine what these kids feel like. Crazy. Here we go. He has the best phone number for that. I can take a few questions. Sir, can you tell us, uh, there's been this question about how the shooter obtained weapons. There's a question about maybe the father sponsoring this license even after those initial contacts. This guy's got some nervous twitches. comment on that. I don't want to answer that question right now in terms of uh, what our work continues to be to look at all of the information and evidence in this case. Is there a precedent to charge a family member who has signed off on a FOID application to someone who's under 21? Is there precedent for that? That is not something that uh, I have done in my administration. It is something I could, we can get back to you on that question in terms of whether that's been done in the past. Uh, I know there's another state in Michigan, totally different set of facts. Uh, we can get back to you on that, but that's not something that I have personally that I have personally done while I've been state attorney. The Ross hearing, uh, Mr. Fumo's statement to the police was discussed. Can you elaborate on that and explain Well, his statement was voluntary. Uh, he was uh, questioned in the Highland Park Police Department. Uh, now, it doesn't matter if his statement was voluntary or co- coerced. I have a hard time with that word. Weird. Because while everybody was busy screaming and yelling about Roe v. Wade, what also happened was your Miranda rights got taken away from you, you bunch of fucking dummies. Anybody ever, anybody realize that? Does anybody know what the Fourth Amendment is? Does anybody know what the Fifth Amendment is? Does anybody know what your Miranda rights are? Now it doesn't matter, and the and the verbiage on this, the 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 nomenclature is, 
whether coerced or voluntary, if you give up any self-incriminating evidence, it can be it can be used. Whereas prior to that, you had to have been, you know, you had to have been under arrest and had your Miranda rights read to you. You know. Now that's out the door. And that that all went through about the same time right at the same time as this whole everybody was so wound up about this thing that it didn't even get taken away. You know, didn't even get taken away. And they pull this. I mean, that's why I had a problem with Kavanaugh. Not because that lady got up there and lied about him, which was obvious. Anybody who can read body language can tell you that that, that that was just a complete lie. It's not hard to tell. I mean, somebody paid her off or something. I don't know. Or she was just such an activist that she couldn't handle the thought. You know, and now, and now you've got the president of the United States. He's getting up there and talking about the, the, the Supreme Court and, and like, Dude, that's the highest court in the land, you dipshit. You know, maybe if they hadn't tried to put that fucking Merrick Garland in there, maybe they'd have somebody in there. I don't know. I mean, it's like I've said, it's either are you gonna are you gonna follow the Constitution or are we not? It can't be both ways. It's like you can't sit here and say, Well, they, yeah, nah. they were talking about muskets. I don't believe they were. And now it's, I mean, I saw the, I saw the, um, oh, fuck, where's he, the mayor of some goofy fucking play. He, he, he's out there grandstanding. He's saying that, um, oh, the mayor of Philadelphia, because a bunch of people got fucking blasted in Philadelphia. They're, I think they're up about, I don't know, 400. There's been over 300 mass shootings so far. It's just the beginning of July. We have a fundamental problem. And it's nothing that legislation is going to do. There are more guns in this country than there are people. Bottom line, you can do whatever you want. Obviously, the background check shit don't work. Illinois has got one of the toughest systems. There. When you got a kid's dad, that's obviously so fucking far out of touch that he's just going to go green light that shit. Apparently, he's a restaurant owner. I don't know nothing about him other than what I've seen. And so that's not much. And it's been tailored to, you know, obviously... Most things put a spin on it. You know, I, I try to... This is probably the first major news station I've watched. Anyway, we'll get back to it. I'll go with that one. Uh, read his Miranda warnings, offered attorneys, etc. Uh, he went into details about what he had done. Uh, he admitted to what he had done. Did you say why? Did you provide your insight into the encrypted speech content and any potential motive or motivation for that? No, and I was also asked the question if he said why he did it. We don't, we don't want to speculate... Uh, on motives right now. I'm going I'm to refer that question to Deputy Chief Cavallis. Certainly our investigation has, has gone very much into what happened after the shooting, what Primo's plan was. Uh, investigators did develop some information that it appears when he drove to Madison, he was driving around. However, he did see a celebration that was occurring in Madison, uh, and he seriously contemplated using the firearm he had in his vehicle to commit another shooting. Um, Jesus. Do you know how much ammunition he had at that point? A approximately 60 rounds. At that point, he did? Yes. Yes. Okay, I was off. I said he had 50. His motivation isn't uh, necessarily clear. I don't want to go specifically into what he told investigators. However, he uh, had some type of affinity towards the number 4 and 7, and inverse was 7-4. We don't have information to suggest he planned on driving to Madison initially to commit another attack. We do believe that he was driving around following the first attack and saw the celebration. I'll have to look and see. I'm not sure. Um, any of you folks out there that I know that live in that area, how far is it to get to Madison? And how did he make it that far and then turn around and come back? They had the information on the vehicle. I don't know how soon after the shooting they got the information, but it sounded like it sounded like they went to the mother's house because that's where he went. He, he was dressed in the, you know, but he was a, not a very good-looking woman either. 
So he gets on the roof. He accesses a fire escape. He gets up there, leaves the fire room, bails off. The, and then after he, after he was done shooting, he, chain, he, he puts on the women's clothes. I mean, I would have thought with all those people that somebody would have recognized the, the rooftop that he was on and, and been running back there. I mean, I know people are trying to protect, you know, the elderly and the little kids, like the, the couple that died, and they, you know, now you got a, an orphaned, an orphaned toddler. They pulled the dad off. He had covered his son, and he took the bullet, and the, and, his, and his wife died too. There's your heroes. That kid's gonna have a tough way to go. He's young enough that um, hopefully there's some. They've got some good family and stuff. You know, that's just that's, that's sad. And for this beaker to do that to some, I mean, it's just it's it's just beyond atrocious. Absolutely, I think this uh, Cavelli guy here, though, out of all the police, I mean, okay, you can see it look in his eyes right now, right? This guy, you can tell he has not slept. Got bags. I mean, but you can tell that this dude is sincere. And he's come out and he's been forthright and honest, even when there's been there's been a couple incidences in this thing so far where there were mistakes made and he's been transparent about it. So I mean, so far this um this uh, this uh C Cavelli, um I mean you, you just see he's just like he can't believe this happened in his town, you know? No, no, sorry. Looks everybody in the eye too. Even when he shakes his head, his eyeballs remain contacted. That dude's he's solid. He looks a way to read his notes. Okay. So now that's the first time that we've had an implication of what... Okay, I'm going to back this up because this is the first time that it's been mentioned what the firearms actually were. So let's see what he said. He was driving around following the first attack and saw the celebration. Indications are that he hadn't put enough thought and research into it. Have you talked to the female witness you were looking for yesterday, and what did you learn? We have not been able to locate her yet. Do you know anything about the affinity that the number is four seven? What does it mean? It's a gangster number. It comes from uh, music that he's interested in. It's for AK-47. Sub 200, a Remington 700, a shotgun. In 2021, he purchased a Glock 43X, and that was after his 21st birthday. Okay. I, I can't speak to why he decided to come back from Madison. Um, there are indications that uh, he didn't put enough planning forward to commit another attack. Uh, there's been some questions about uh, the FBI and, and in their response in Madison, evidence technicians in Madison. Uh, he did uh, dispose of his phone in Madison, the Madison area in Middleton. That phone has since been recovered. Chief, is the father cooperating with the investigation? I don't want to go into levels of cooperation. Uh, we're, we're talking to everybody, though, and, and working on getting the most cooperation we can out of everybody. So can you just tell us in 2019, Highland Park notified the state police about the knife incident. Is there not And what that reporter's bringing up is the uh, the the incident with the knives. When you have somebody that's a, a you know this happened all in the same year. I think the first incident was in April of 2019, and, and I believe the second one was in September. And so when you have two incidents like that, one that's a suicide, the other one's um, a threatening murder, in that short of a time period, you're talking about five, you know, under six months. 
Now, this is, the, you know, here's the thing. Everybody gets all upset about the, the background. Background checks are already in place. It doesn't matter where you're at. They're in place. So, so you know, these um, these different law law enforcement agencies, I think what needs to happen is they need to be, they need to do a better job of filing paperwork, being transparent with other agencies so they know what's going on. Now, it sounded like from what um, Cavelli said, he said that they called the state the state police in on the matter, so, and it, it kind of was a deal where I don't know, turned over to them, and then the mental health thing went to the mental health people, and they declined the mental health, and then they just put the kid in homeschooling. So instead of addressing the, the issue, they, they homeschooled him, and I'm guessing that's where he ends up in that basement down there by himself. And then you throw down, you know, the lockdowns and everything like that. I mean, it's 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 a it's a fucking powder keg here. There's a lot of weird coincidental stuff too. I didn't understand the whole thing with him driving up to Madison and all that, but I guess if he had planned on if he was gonna go try and do, you know, another round, maybe that's where he was gonna have his you know, his custer's last stand. But from everything I saw, he was he was prime candidate for the um, the death by cop, and it looked like that's kind of what he was intending. And for some reason, he he made his escape, and he premeditated it. So he must have been I don't know. There's just there's a lot of weird stuff, mixed things going on there. I mean, he obviously premeditated getting away because he had the female clothing. So to me, from the outside looking in, he had planned on you know doing another mass casualty event while while law enforcement was down there dealing with the the wreckage that he'd already brought upon everybody and he was going to go do it again and then probably that was going to be you know otherwise why would he have had the other I mean he had the other but I guess the other weapon was in the car and he borrowed the car from his mom so I I don't know if he had the, they said there was a witness that said she saw something about him stashing a a weapon in a red blanket and I don't know if that I don't know if when he when he came off the rooftop if he got in the women's clothing and then he had the other firearm stashed and he grabbed that and then went to his mom's I mean you don't, don't think, think she would have known something I mean she let him borrow the car I don't know. There's a lot of things here. There's a lot of open-ended stuff here, and I'm sure this investigation is going to get a lot, a lot crazier. I bet there's going to be a lot more wild shit that comes out. I don't know. We'll just have to keep keep looking at it. But I don't know. All I know is we got a lot of sick people in this country, and we got to figure this out. I mean, it's it. it we we got to you know. And like I told my son last night, I said, listen, I said, any of your classmates, I said, you read anything, you hear anything like this going on on social media? I said, any of it. I said, I don't know what you're on. I mean, I'm, you know, I've tried to keep them off the crap chat. It's almost possible to keep these kids off the TikTok. Sounds like that might be going away anyways. I don't know. They're, I think they're going to try to get rid of that again. And anybody on there, I know a lot. Of, I know everybody's into it. I mean, I even, I got it on my phone, but once I figured out what it is and what they're doing with it, I mean, it's just a Chinese uh, data mining thing is all it is. So I haven't really been on there. I, I mean, there's there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff out there. Some of it's kind of funny and shit, but, you know, what do they call that goofy dance they do? The, the, the butt floss or something like that? I don't know. You can only watch so much of it. But there is, you know, I mean, I even put a couple of videos on there at first, but I haven't done anything on it in a while, and I probably won't. You know, it doesn't matter. Any of the social media, anything that we're doing, it's all being watched anyways, I guess. So there's really no reason to get upset about it. But I guess if it is the Chinese National Government, that you know, the Communist Party of China, that's uh, mining our data and seeing what, you know, our whims and fancies are, then I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess it's better just to have the NSA doing it, huh? That's a pretty dumbass way to look at it, isn't it? You know, we might all be Chinese before this thing's all said and done anyways. But anyway, I don't know. That's some, I'm going to continue to watch this. I know nobody else really wants to. Um, oh, I was going to... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this off for a minute. And I'm going to try and take this out with something a little bit funny. Just because I, I need it. And I'm sure everybody else does too. 
anyway hopefully everybody had a good uh little hem and haw i didn't do anything for it it wasn't because i was protesting anything i just didn't feel like it was the right time and place i feel like that things have gone so so far south you know and you see you see the hurt and the, and the and the pain that people are going through and you see the erratic behavior with people it's because people don't make good decisions when 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 they are financially strapped and you know when people are wondering about their next meal you just it, it, they don't think right you don't think right when you're in those straits and and, and you and you don't know what, what are you going to do and you've got an opportunity you say you've got a criminal opportunity to come up a little do something you know what i mean you're going to do it you're going you're going to take that risk you're going to make bad decisions and and these people that we elect they don't give a shit they don't care they i don't know how many times i don't know how to how to like pound this into everybody's head that these fuckers don't give a shit about you and me they do not care when it comes time to election oh yeah they care all of a sudden now all of a sudden they really give a shit about you and and they're just out there they're just public servants bullshit these people aren't public servants they are they're closer to being you know not even human than they are anything they're leeches they're, I mean, you know, David Icke always talks about the reptile. I mean, if you're going to make a comparison to somebody being a reptile, I mean, Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris, Jill Biden, he didn't even announce anything. He didn't even say anything about D-Day until like 930 at night. He wasn't going to say, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, Everybody who knows me knows I'm not a Christian. Okay, sorry, I'm not. Um, d- doesn't mean I don't believe that there's something bigger than us out there. There certainly is. But she had Jill Biden had to get up there again and prompt him to say "God bless America" at the end of his stupid thing. He lies, talks about how we're in such great position and everything is just wonderful and blah blah blah. It's not. It is. It is as bad as bad has been since the Great Depression. And this thing could be even worse. I mean, it could be worse. You know. I mean, it, it's it's going to take it's going to take a lot of work to get things figured out, and it's going to take some people taking a stand. And 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 doing what you know is 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 right and what needs to be done. And I'm not just talking about citizens, but law enforcement is going to have to make a decision. People in the military are going to have to make a decision. I mean. Look what we're getting ready to do over there in Ukraine. 300,000 soldiers on high alert. We got World War III ready to bust out, and we're sitting here worried about this fool. Now, that does, I'm not trying to trivialize anything that happened to those innocent people because it's not trivial. However, look what's going on over there. NATO's been planning this since 2014, people. Do your homework. This has been in the works since 2014. They, they want... I mean, the whole the, this has all been pre-planned, and and unfortunately, the the people, the innocent people of Ukraine, are the pawns. You know, I mean, their their army is decimated, their military is decimated right now, and you're not getting that. You know, you're not getting the truth about it. Sorry, I mean, they say they're losing two hundred soldiers a day. Okay, well, everything that we've seen over there has been an embellishment, right? Like the ghost of Kiev, video game. You know, then because a guy gets shot down, they say, oh, he was the ghost. Come on. We don't even know if that we don't even know what's going on over there. To tell you the truth. I mean, Russia's pretty much taken over the whole Donbass region at, this, region at this point. I mean, that's a whole nother thing right there. And when 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 uh, Gravyhead is asked how long the people of this country are going to be expected to keep footing the bill for this shit, he just says as long as it takes. What about him? Where's he putting in? How much money is he put into this? He put any gas in, in, in his motorcade vehicles? He put any gas in Air Force One? Nah. You are. I am. That's what's happening here, folks. None of these people don't pay for a thing. They just take, 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 take. And then when they don't got that, they just take some fucking more. They will they wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. I can tell you that for a fact. I can tell you that for a fact. These government fuckers, they don't give a shit. They do not care. 
Any of you that think they do, you're out of your mind. None of them do. It's all power. It's all money. And I, for the life of me, I don't understand why. I don't get it. I don't know if they're just so delusional that they think they're never going to die. Because we're all going to die. Why don't we all try and prolong it for one another and make make the ride worth it? You know, take the ride as long as we can. I mean, can't we look at one another and know that? I mean, when you look at somebody else and and, and realize that someday that you know that life force is going to be gone at them, that that you know that they have limited time just like you and I do. Do you think those people that went to that parade on the fourth ever thought that that's how it was going to end? Do you think those two parents that they had to pull off their little toddler, little boy, like he's maybe a year and a half, two years, I don't know, little little kid. Do you think that they thought when they took that took their son to that parade that it was going to end with the authorities pulling their dead bodies off and finding that little boy underneath them? You know, and that's heroes right there, straight up. One guy had to, one guy put his grabbed his son and it was running and he saw he put his son in a dumpster. Now that sounds, you know, you go dump, but I mean, there's not a safer place. I mean, he was protecting his son. That was a, I mean, it was a good move. I mean, you don't want to throw your kid in a dumpster. I mean, obviously that's got um, you know some uh, dysphemistic implications just because of you know the prom night dumpster babies and all that but sorry that was a bad joke but I mean you you know you see humanity come out when you know I saw some of it where you know there's one I saw where you know this this um woman was grabbing a you know there's an older older gentleman had a hard time he was having a hard time getting getting moving and she was had him by the arm was helping him along you know she could have been trying to save herself, but no, she was trying to save somebody else. So there was a lot of heroes out there that day. It's just, um, I don't know. I wish I had the answers, but the, I mean, the answer comes down to you've got a bunch of, of, of disaffected, disoriented, disillusioned, you know, people that um, I guess they feel like that that this is, so bad. I mean, that that kid in one of in that song, he said, there, "There's no yesterday, there's no tomorrow, there's only right now." And I know I say that it's a similar thing, but I'm not I'm not saying that in the reference of just going out and murdering a bunch of people in cold blood. I mean, when I say that, I'm talking about living for the moment and not letting it pass you by because you're worried about the past or because you're worried about the future. Because as we see, there's seven people there that went to a Fourth of July parade. And didn't go back home. Now they're not feeling any pain over it, but it sure is. It sure is. I mean, that that shit trickles down. Anytime there's an event like this, it, it it's not. And I hate. I'm not being. I'm not trying to be cold here, but it's not the people that lose their life. It's the people that are left behind to pick up the pieces. Of, you know, the kid losing both his mom and dad. However old that kid was, I, I want to say he was, he was definitely a toddler. No older than two, I would say. You know, he's going to have to go through that. Other people as well. And even, the, and, and the injured too. I mean, you're talking PTSD. You're talking people that are going to require, I mean, people that probably can't, you know, maybe they won't be able to go back to work. Might be in a wheelchair. You know? Life-changing events. It just happened like that. So, I mean, that's why I always say in all things be kind because we don't know. We don't know. None of us know. Like I, was, you know, like I say, it, it, you could be checking dates on milk at Walmart. I, was, I know I always say that too. I'm getting a little cliche, but you never know when Beaker is going to be the one that comes in. And you know what? You see where this shit happens. It happens in small towns. I'm not trying to make anybody paranoid or anything like that. But it, it, it always hits where people don't, don't expect it. They did not expect that in Highland Park. I can guarantee you that. Obviously, they didn't. I mean, you know, and thankfully they, uh, they, they, they caught that kid 
you know? And I don't know what, I mean, I don't think anything's come out of it as far as medication, but, you know, the left tries to say, oh, well, you just, your medication doesn't, and it's like bullshit. How come they're all on psychotropic medication when they pull these things? I mean, the majority of these people that do this shit are on psychotropic meds. And they have crazy problems. And then there's a whole bunch of other things that you could think about on the thing too. And I'll probably include some of that in the, um, in some of the blogs and, and things like that that I'm working on today. I'm going to start um, putting those up on my website. Um, there is a, um, I'll have to put a link to it, but there's another uh, new blog site that goes through, uh, through Twitter. And I've put some stuff out there. Uh, probably start putting things back on Medium again as well. So um, anyway, with that in mind, I'm going to sign off. You know, I'm not going to say hearts and prayers because it doesn't do a fucking thing. It ain't no good. What we need to do is, you know, we need to guard our treasures and we need to pay attention to our kids. Find out what the hell it is that they're doing. Figure it out. I think a bird just flew into my window. <laughs> Got kamikaze birds. Oh, well. Alrighty. With that, I guess I'm going to take you out with, I think I'm going to take you out with some Brandon Hart here today. Maybe go back, uh, I don't know. Let's see what we got here. All right. And I'm going to say be good or be good at it. In all things, be kind and do no harm. Be your brother and your sister's keepers. All right. Peace out. And there's butthole Joe. All right. We'll get him out of there. They want you say. I could have done more. I'd miss you. I will always love you. You will always hold a space in my heart.